Okay, I think we can start now because if people come a little bit later, they will be able to watch the recording and also they will be very easy to, to understand what we are saying. Uh, hello, everybody. Today we will have another Meet the Scientist session. Um, <clears throat> Adi De Jong here with me is a professor of biology, biology educator, educator and inventor from Netherlands. And he will talk to us about his research and his latest work regarding the use of GPS transmitter in wildlife research. Hello, Adi. Hello, Enrique. How are you? Hello, everybody. Okay, I will share your presentation now. All right, Let yes, me. please. So this is your presentation. You can control it. Yes, and... I will. Okay, perfect. Okay. I'm very happy uh, I'm uh, able to tell you about uh, GPS tracking uh, of animals. And the first slide already shows you something about uh, my passion for special species. And this is uh, the otter, Lutra Lutra. Um, not much is known about Lutra Lutra, and therefore we tried to monitor them in the field in uh, different ways. And we will focus in this lecture on GPS tracking. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, well, a lot of biologists uh, wish to follow animals 24-7, so every hour of the day. And uh, since last century, uh, mostly the VHF tracking uh, uh, transmitters, VHF transmitters on a collar in the animal or implanted uh, in the belly of animals uh, are used. Um, but there are a lot of disadvantages of, uh, of this method because it has uh, low accuracy of positioning and you need to go into the field many, many times, which is, of course, very nice when you're a biologist. But this takes also a lot of fuel for a car or a boat or sometimes also you need an airplane. In the pictures, you see something uh, about how it works. Uh, here you see uh, an, uh, a researcher with an antenna and he tries to pick up a beep beep signal from the animal and he needs to go for this to different locations and then you get a, get a special direction and when you uh, translate these directions um, uh, on a map then you can have a triangulation and from the point of where the, the lines come together um, you know where about this animal is. Today, you also have apps for this, for instance, for the iPhone or Android tele telephones. Mm -hmm. Development of GPS tags, um, um, people got very interested in because GPS tags have a lot of uh, advantages. And I will show you some of these advantages uh, later. Mostly the first GPS tags were only for large animals because GPS needs a lot of power and therefore also big batteries. Here you see two lions in Addo Elephant Park in South Africa. The photo has been taken by myself uh, about uh, the lions uh, who just were reintroduced there. Well, and why use the GPS for uh, studying uh, animals? Uh, already uh, I talked about this VHF transmitter. Uh, this is also for short, medium range. The spatial detail is, however, very low. Um, but an advantage is, for instance, that you can track animals for more than two years if the transmitter has a good battery. Um, there are also other systems. Uh, you have the Argos system, for instance, and this is also a satellite transmit transmitter, mainly used also in whales in the seas and oceans. But uh, the spatial resolution is very low, um, and it's also a very costly system. Not so long ago, people also started to use geolocators and they use the light regime around the planet Earth because the Earth is turning to translate the, the light regime into positions. But we will focus uh, now on the GPS. 
And this is very nice because the spatial detail of the locations is very high and also the temporal resolution about every minute, every five minutes, you can get uh, a location of an animal. The disadvantage, however, is that it takes a lot of power. So it is hard to get data for, for instance, two years of one animal because the battery will, will be depleted. Nowadays, there are also mixed systems, as you can read below in, uh, in this slide, uh, also for uh, tracking animals underground with a magneto inductive tracking. So there are a lot of engineers uh, trying to mix systems to get the most out of animal tracking. But actually, what is GPS? GPS is a system uh, divide, which can be divided in two parts. You have the satellites, which are signal senders. They send a signal in which there is the location information. And on planet Earth, there are people, or in our case, animals, with so-called GPS receivers, and they receive the signal from those satellites which are turning around Mother Earth. But, but how does it work? Um, I will read this little text uh, you see here to, to give you an impression of how uh, the system really operates. GPS satellites circle the Earth twice a day in a very precise orbit, which is important, and transmit signal information to Earth, uh, to those receivers. The GPS receivers take this information and use triangulation, as we have just seen for the VHF tracking, to calculate the user's exact location. Essentially, the GPS receiver compares the time a signal was transmitted by a satellite with the time it was received. So those the receivers are very clever. There's clever software in those. The time difference tells the GPS receiver how, how far away the satellite is. And now with distance measurements from a few more satellites, the receiver can determine the user's position and display it on the unit's electronic map. Um, well, Adi, we have uh, a question already, in the chat. Uh, how heavy is the receiver? I did, did not hear uh, properly the question. Uh, how heavy is the receiver, uh, the weight of the receiver? Ah, yes, well, there are the, the previous receivers from last century. They they could already be quite, quite heavy, and especially the battery makes it heavy. But nowadays, and later on in the presentation, I will show you, there are really very small receivers. So the receivers themselves weigh just one, two grams. But the battery well, is uh, most important for the total weight of the transmitter. Hmm. Um, if anybody else has some questions in between, please address them. And after the talk, uh, we can have uh, more questions, of course, and I'm happy uh, to answer those. Um, well, already in Israel, uh, they had a wonderful uh, project uh, in classrooms uh, with uh, GPS and how it works. And you see the photo on this slide uh, of children in a classroom in Israel, and they have all kinds of wires. And with the wires, they imitate this triangulation to know the position. And under the photo, you see a link uh, about this uh, project. It's really interesting for you to have a look at this later on. Yes, we will send the presentation, as we said in the beginning. OK, th thanks, uh, Enrique. OK, we move on to the next slide, because also GPS has sometimes difficulties. People who know GPS, for instance, in a car uh, for routing, going from one place to another, sometimes have experienced this. Um, because in cities, um, you have sometimes very, very high buildings, and we call this an urban canyon. And in this canyon, it is sometimes hard for the GPS receivers to receive those signals. And this is called a positional delusion of pre uh, precision. And on the right in the slide, you see some picture which shows that. 
But there are all kinds of tricks nowadays to improve the accuracy of GPS by means of using the mobile internet. So the GPS receivers have some help of the mobile internet. And also some countries have, and for instance, the EU have uh, extra systems, which are called SBAS, to help the receivers getting a better accuracy. But there's not only GPS. Mostly people on Earth speak about GPS, but we should realize that there are more systems now. There are four major global positioning systems. The one which we call GPS is actually the USA NAVSTAR system. Uh, Russia also has a very good uh, GPS system, and it's called GLONASS. European Union has a very sophisticated system, which is not finished yet. It is called Galileo. And with the Galileo, it is even possible to have a bi-directional um, uh, communication between the receivers and the satellites. So with GPS, it's just one direction from the satellite to the GPS. And of course, there's China. China has the Baidu navigation satellite system, which is also operational and which will be expanded also. And nowadays are, all, are already GPS receivers which can use a mix of these systems. And together it would be better to speak about global navigation satellite system or GNSS. But in this presentation, I will use GPS. But when I use it, it also means that these other systems uh, can be used. Okay, we move on to the next slide. But then uh, when the GPS receivers are on the animal, how to get out the data from this receiver, from this uh, transmitter to, to yourself uh, for processing the data to know where the animals are? Well, there are some different kinds of GPS transmitters or tags, as we can call them. You have a logging device. You just put it on the animal. It has a GPS receiver. And like, for instance, an SD card. And on the SD card, all the GPS data, the fixes, the, the positions of the animals, they are written on this uh, memory card. And later, you have to go into the field and try to find back this receiver. And then you go to your own computer, download the data, and you see where the animal was. So it's not an easy system. And with a lot of animals, you will not be able to retrieve your GPS from the, from the field. So that's why a lot of biologists thought about other systems. So there is a system where you also have to go into the field and you open a wireless link with the receiver on uh, the animal. And then you can download with VHF, U UHF or Bluetooth uh, or another RF system the data to your receiving station. But it's also possible to use GPS with Argos satellites, and then you have an uplink to the Argos satellites, which is another satellite system, and then you get the data through Argos in your email box. And then there are other systems which use a kind of modem, which looks a little bit like your uh, mobile phone, uh, but it is a, a network which is expanded globally. So anywhere on the planet, you can send your data or, or receive data. And then you can get them to yourself by SMS or internet. And then the system is the number five, which we use for our wildlife research. We use GSM modems together with the GPS. And a GSM modem is just like your normal cellular phone or a GSM phone. And then you can receive the data by email, SMS, or internet. As I told you already, we have a, a limitation because the battery life, it's a little bit a problem. GPS receivers use much more battery power than the, the, the older VHF ones. And when you also use a GSM modem or Iridium modem to get the data, then even more power is used. So, you need to find a good system in which you have 
a sleep cycle of your transmitter. So it's in deep sleep and doesn't use uh, power or just a little bit. And a wake up system in which it quickly gets a DPS fix and sends it quickly uh, as it can. Okay, um, GPS tracking, I showed you already for big animals like elephants, lions, uh, deer. It's not such a problem because those animals can carry uh, heavier batteries. Um, like Enrico already said, uh, the, the, uh, the GPS um, uh, transmitters itself, they are not that large or heavy, but the batteries are heavy. But if you want to track these animals, which we see here, in uh, the slide, these are mustelids, they're much smaller and they cannot carry such heavy batteries. So we had to find something to deal with that because also we want to know how these animals use their habitat. Uh, and this is important for uh, nature protection. Um, in some of these animals, you can put a collar around the neck as you see in the picture on the right. Mostly in such a collar on the top, there is a GPS antenna. And in the lower part, there is the battery, the GSM modem, and the GPS receiver. But sometimes uh, you have animals like otters, uh, which do not have a distinctive neck. Uh, they have a streamlined body. And for this, we uh, developed a kind of lightweight leather harness you sometimes also see on the dogs. And this works very well. There's another disadvantage because if you buy commercially such uh, GPS uh, transmitters, then they are very expensive, about 3,000 to 4,000 euro for each collar. And this was a little bit annoying for us. So that's why we tried to find a way to, to get them cheaper. Uh, but we also had to first realize that you cannot use this system with GPS and GSM everywhere. We noticed in a study in, in Ireland that um, um, ah, I have a small problem with my, uh, yes, it's fine here now. My, um, uh, and my screen wanted to shut down, but it's okay now. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, there was a, yeah, there was a problem in, in Ireland that not everywhere uh, in your study area there is a network cover and we noticed this in Ireland uh, after we started there that there are gaps in the network cover so your GPS will work it will work everywhere in the world but when you do not have the GSM network and you want to send the data to the server this doesn't work so with all these studies you need to prepare first look in the field if all conditions are right Okay, uh, because of these high costs I spoke about, we started to develop ourselves low cost GPS DSM transmitters. And here you see our first type uh, we developed in 2009. And um, uh, it is uh, not, so, not so large. And fortunately we could lower the cost to only 800 euros. We could program it ourselves with open source Python software. And as I told you before, it has this nice sleep wake up function. And it was small and lightweight. So we could start to use this now for, uh, for others. Here, just to show you what, what uh, technological uh, features are behind the system, is for instance, this tracking software. We will not go into detail of this, of course, but this is the software which runs inside that GPS DSM tracker. And this is very clever one. It makes the contact with uh, the server. It can also download new settings. If as a biologist, you see that your animal is more active during the day, you need to adapt the system of sleeping and waking up to give the data. And this software could do all of that. Beside that, you must have something uh, on the internet. You want to receive those data and you want to see where your animal has been. And here you see the development of the server software, just basically uh, on the left, we have a login, of course, because we wanted to protect those data. Not everybody should see them. 
And on the right upper part of this slide, you see all the animals we have tagged with special numbers. And here we just selected one, one of them uh, with the blue marking. And then automatically you go to the map you see below. And in this case, it is about an Irish otter living on the Atlantic coast of the southwest of uh, Ireland. Then uh, you should be able to change all these fixed schedulers and the data transmission. It is, could also be done online. Right? So you could just fill in on the left upper part the times at which you want to have the data on your server. And below, you see again all the devices, mm -hmm. the numbers of the animals. And then you can, for instance, say that every hour between uh, midnight and one o'clock at night, you want to have just one GPS fix, or maybe between five and six o'clock in the early morning, you want to have 12 GPS locations. All is possible, or no, or no position, that's also possible. So it is a very versatile system. Okay, so we had all um, preparations uh, done and the, the trackers work, we, they have been tested, but then uh, you need to have the animals. And in our case, it was about otters. And uh, we managed, together with uh, colleagues abroad, to tag uh, otters, Lutra Lutra, in Portugal and Ireland for really the first time in the world with these GPS DSM trackers. This, uh, in Ireland, we went to the place you just saw uh, on this map. Um, it is in the southwest uh, of Ireland. Um, and we were quite fortunate to uh, trap nine otters in only 10 nights. But then you have to see if the otters are fit. Uh, you measure their body weight, their length. And we thought that only seven otters out of uh, these nine were fit enough to carry these transmitters, which were not that heavy, but we wanted to make sure it was okay. On the photos, you see uh, above the otter at night, it is sedated, and uh, right uh, under, you see an otter which gets such GPS DSM tag. And we saw that after half a day already, the otter accepted this, and it was absolutely no problem for the animal to carry this. And we will, can see this Enrique, on a, on a movie, uh, yeah. perhaps you can show the movie now of an otter which was trapped in Israel and released. Let me change and start All the right. movie. Yeah. Here it comes. So this is how you release an otter, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Here in the case, you see the otter with the transmitter uh, on the dorsal side of its body, and it's here to release back into the net. I do not see the movie yet. Is that correct, or should I press? You look at the device. Yes, it is finishing right now. Uh, I can go back to the presentation. Okay, fine. So everybody saw it? Yes, it is synchronized for everybody. Okay, great. Okay. I will go to a slide. Yes, it was. I think fine. it this one. Yes. OK, so to show you some of the results uh, we got, um, uh, you see here in this slide, in the upper part, a map of the study area in the southwest of Ireland. And you can see that the author here um, went from the mainland, you see on the right, to the island on the left. Uh, the, the Google Maps is not that clear, I see, to shirk an island. Mm -hmm. And on the right side of this picture, you see how high the cliffs are there along the coast. And it didn't matter to this author. It, it just went through the sea with its transmitter on its back, even uh, with uh, the big storms of, uh, of 8, 9, Bow 4. And on the photo on uh, the bottom side of this slide, you see how the habitat looks like. And the otters just climb up these high cliffs and they have their, their sleeping places uh, in the vegetation you see high up in the, in the hills. So with this GPS DSM uh, tracker system, for the first time, we could really see what the otters are doing along the coast. And we also have been building in 
these transmitters and other transmitter. It's a classic VHF transmitter, a little one you see in this slide on the left, left upper corner. And this is it possible to retrieve the GPS DSM tracker from the field after the, the big battery has, uh, has gone flat after uh, the, there's no energy in that battery anymore. And as I told you, GPS and GSM takes a lot of power. And after a few months, the, the, the power is gone. But then you like to get back your transmitter from the field uh, for reuse. Actually, in Ireland, we have used the same trackers we have used in Portugal before. So that's really handy. And it's also good for nature. Uh, don't leave your stuff into the nature. Uh, you need to be uh, very, uh, very clear about that. And on the right side, you see a, a small um, uh, newspaper clipping because one of the trackers we found on a very steep and high cliff uh, by this VHF tr uh, transmitter, but we couldn't get there. And the Irish Coast Guard has a special cliff rescue team mm -hmm. and they needed some practice. So we asked them, please, can you help us retrieving our tracker from that high cliff and so they did and they had a really wonderful time and we too and after that of course in ireland you go to the pub and you drink a nice beer and uh, <laughs> so that was very good for friendship as well and now everybody knows about the authors there and this study area and everybody was very happy about uh, those uh, result results which is also good for conservation um, of course, um, when you do this work, you never stop development. So we have now also new trackers. We uh, keep on developing them. On the left, you see a small one. And at the moment, and I will show you later, we have even a smaller one. And on the right side, you see another approach. And this is a tracker in which only you need a few seconds instead of more seconds to get a GPS signal. And on a big computer, on the server, it, the calculations are done about the position. So not on the GPS receiver itself, but on the server. And this has also advantages and disadvantages. And then the last development we have, it's really a very small GPS DSM tracker, which is still at the moment the smallest in the world. It's only 25 by 25 millimeters. And this can also be used on birds, for instance, with a solar cell. Um, so, yeah, you can use it uh, actually for anything. But when there is a GSM, of course, it should be the GSM network. On the right side, you see a test we did when we drove back from our holidays uh, from Portugal to the Netherlands just to test it. But when you, you use such devices on animals, you have welfare issues uh, because you put something on an animal and this is yeah, what we call invasive. It can give stress to the animals. Uh, you need to trap them, to catch them, which is not nice for the animals. So you must really be aware of what you're doing. Sometimes scientific questions in animal research can be answered by using other methods. Uh, for instance, the trap cams, uh, the, these are the cameras with infrared you can put in the field, and then you can also learn a lot about behavior. But sometimes you need to have more information, very detailed, like we have shown for the Irish authors, and then, yes, you can decide to use GPS trackers. Uh, also, licensing, licensing is necessary. Uh, Animal Welfare Act, for instance. Um, and we think that when you use these devices, there should always be a clear benefit for the conservation of the species. For instance, in Ireland, the results have given extra protection uh, for the coastal otters because uh, of our results. And uh, which is also important, you need to have a thorough preparation of such study design first test everything very well and then you can put the devices on uh, on animals like like otters for instance well and thank you for your attention okay thank you if anyone now has a question or during this small conversation that we will have uh, you can ask it ask it through the chat thank you adi oh yeah you're welcome uh, 
Yes, Lydia, uh, Lydia asked about download the presentation. Lydia, we will send it, uh, Evita will send it to everybody, the recording of this session, so this uh, hour of, of the recording, and also the presentation and the video and the everything. Also, you can make questions in the future if you want via email. Thank you. Well, Adi, uh, I have some questions about uh, what do you do? Uh, what is, how big is your team work? Do you work with a small team? What what do they do? Uh, I mean, for career development, career development for the pupils in the schools, what they should study to be to do these kind of things and work in the nature? Yeah. So well, we have a, a team of uh, of four people. So it's a very small team, but it is an international team. Um, we have, for instance, um, uh, an Italian. GPS uh, DNSS uh, specialist. We have all also a colleague in Russia who mm -hmm. is in our team, and together, based on questions from biologists, uh, we develop these uh, trackers. Um, now we also have a new question uh, about tracking of uh, flamingos mm -hmm. um, in the Caribbean. Uh, so our devices will need to have some adaptation. Uh, for instance, to use the, the, the solar cells. And your second question was? Uh, what did you study? What people, uh, pupils should study to be working in your team, for example? Ah, yes, 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 of course. Um, well, I have um, done two studies in the Netherlands. First, I did an agricultural college. And uh, in this uh, study, I was trained to be an environmental uh, engineer uh, dealing with uh, uh, water uh, purification, uh, dealing with environmental problems, uh, also habitat assessments, uh, for instance. Uh, after this, I uh, went to university to study biology. And uh, during my biology studies, um, I studied ecology, ethology, animal behavior, uh, and also some uh, technical parts uh, to, yeah, to, uh, to be able to develop such uh, devices. And uh, fortunately, I could do my final thesis with uh, Dr. Hans Krug, who is a carnivore specialist uh, in Scotland. He's retired now, um, but uh, yeah, from this study, I got a lot of uh, experience and, of course, uh, a lot of joy uh, being able, yeah, being uh, able to work as a biologist in the field. It's absolutely great. Okay, good. There are also some questions in the chat. Uh, did any collar broke on the experiment? I I think they mean the the collars that the animals had. Ah, yes. Um, uh, we had very, very resistant, you know. Yes, we had um, in Ireland uh, one uh, accident actually, and one of the authors, um, uh, which had this collar, uh, got chased by, and we could uh, establish that this happened by an orca, by a killer oh. whale. <laughs> and this killer whale attacked the author. Uh, the author didn't die immediately or wasn't eaten, but was heavily wounded. And it stranded on a beach where it was later found, and it died because of its wounds. Mm -hmm. And also on the tracker, there were the bite wounds that you could see in the epoxy layer of the teeth uh, of the orca. So that was actually the accident uh, we had with uh, with one of them. But the other um, for the other animals, um, these uh, harnesses, these trackers, they are supposed to drop off the animal after the study is done. Now you have two systems uh, for this. Um, the first system is that the, the leather collar, it's a, it's a lightweight leather, mm -hmm. um, that it breaks down by itself uh, because of wear and tear. And you have also a special electronic drop off switch. And so two pieces of the leather are connected and mm -hmm. after a time, a uh, time, uh, special time, the, it releases itself and the collar drops down to the ground. And mm -hmm. with this little VHF transmitter, you go in the field with the antenna 
and you can retrieve it. Yeah, so, so that is how you retrieve the, the color, right? Exactly, yes. Okay. And, and, and with this system, it is also very nice that the animals will not walk all their lives with these transmitters, yeah. just mm -hmm. for the, the time you need the data. And sometimes you just need a short time, and sometimes you need more months. Okay, good. There is also one question, one technical question from Slovakia. Uh, you mentioned that receiver can be programmed in Python, but this language needs to be interpreted. What is under it? What kind of system? Yes, yes. Um, nowadays, we do not have only uh, the Python uh, language, um, but we also program uh, uh, GPS trackers with uh, C, uh, the, the, pro the, oh, yeah. the program C. And this is obviously for a microcontroller. The devices which used the Python uh, software, uh, they had this special modem, a tailored modem, in which there is a P Python interpreter. And so it has its own microcontroller and it can interpret the Python language, Python language. Yeah. yeah, and compiles this and runs it. Uh -huh, good. Also from Estela, uh, can you please say some words about your work in Israel that took place yes. uh, last um, month? Yes, um, we, we have done uh, the work in Israel as well. Here we had an amazing trapping result of, uh, of three otters in uh, four trapping nights. And uh, all three otters were trapped in the last night. Imagine what a night that was. Uh, that was not uh, easy. You saw the movie also. It was from uh, Israeli uh, research. And now yeah, the data are coming in. So uh, we are happy uh, about that. And yeah, the research just started, so we cannot say much more about this at this moment, but it goes on. And um, those results will also be used in the conservation of the Israeli otter population. Because in Israel, in the north, uh, there's actually quite a lot of water. I was surprised to see that. You have wonderful wetlands like the Hula Valley, you have the Jordan River, you have uh, little streams going, uh, flowing from the Golan Heights, and otters are are there, but the population is small, perhaps only a hundred individuals. So, uh, and a hundred individuals, it's not, um, yeah, uh, the perfect base for long time survival of such uh, populations. So, together with the Israeli colleagues, we are looking at how to. Uh, save this population and, and how to increase also the population size. So it's not only the tracking of the authors there, but it was also to yeah to see what can be done to uh, to have the population increased there. Mm -hmm. Also from Lydia, I think this system is for a better management of the animals, but also to see their situation concerning health. Do you have any reserve where they are kept sick animals? Do you have a program on the participation of volunteers for their protection? Do you have any software to monitor them? Uh, we, um, we have uh, uh, in our foundation a, a center which takes in orphaned uh, animals. Um, we have had, for instance, uh, three orphaned uh, otter cubs and in the beginning, those orphaned uh, animals, they, they need a lot of attention from humans uh, because they are uh, weak, they're, sometimes they are ill. Uh, but mm. after a while, you must take a distance from those animals because otherwise the animals get too much attached to people. And you don't want that because our goal with orphaned animals is to release them back into the wild again. And when they are released back into the wild, they need to be very wild again. And uh, with these animals, it worked very well. At first, a lot of attention and then slowly uh, diminishing this attention and getting the animals uh, wild again. And also with these animals, which are released uh, back into the wild, we use these trackers, sometimes also the classic VHF system to see if they survive well. Um, because that's also uh, yeah one of the responsibilities uh, to see yeah. if the animals are doing fine. And we have seen that with uh, several of these animals, mostly authors, this worked uh, very well. 
Um, unfortunately, one of the animals we have um, uh, taken care of uh, later got uh, overrun by a car, which can happen also. But from the post-mortem of the animal, we could see from placental scars, uh, these are scars in the uterus, um, uh, in, the, in the placenta really, um, that um, the animal uh, we reared uh, gave birth. Uh, so she, she had young, uh, which probably survived. Um, but yes, uh, when, especially here in the Netherlands, we have a, a dense road network and animals can get killed on the road. Mm -hmm. Another question from Slovakia. Are there any people who are against these interfering with nature procedures, you know? Yes, there, there are really uh, um, people against it. And I, I can understand this uh, because uh, it is invasive, as you would say in English. Uh, you have to catch the animal, which gives stress. The animal has to carry such transmitter or sometimes with the VHF transmitters, uh, the, these transmitters get implanted. So that's really something. That's why I also had the last slide in my uh, presentation mm -hmm. about be aware of what you do and do not use these techniques easily. First, look at alternatives which are non-invasive. And this is always what we do. In our research, we use nowadays a lot of these trap cams, as you call them, eh? these infrared uh, cameras, which you can put anywhere in the field. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so you should really know at first what it is for. And we know there, there are people against it. We also had criticism about this. But then when we showed the results of our work, and also how these uh, results were translated into the conservation of the species, most people understand. Yeah. Also, uh, I was thinking about these kind of things because do you share the results, the data? Once you have processed it, uh, do you share it with the community or maybe they can be used, can they be used to, for educational purposes? For example, pupils or students doing some, some kind of research research projects in the classroom yes yeah, so, sometimes yes um but it's not always like that um sometimes we are asked by other research groups um elsewhere in in in, in europe but also nowadays outside of europe and then it is their decision it's not our decision but always we ask those research groups that the research will be used for conservation purposes mm -hmm. so and uh, in most cases i must say um all results will be published in scientific journals but uh, because this is the case it can take sometimes a while yeah. uh, uh, because these publications they need time right? they need to be written uh, english corrected and then uh, there are referees uh, of these scientific journals, it, so it goes back and forth, and then finally, and mostly this can take a year, sometimes more, then the, the scientific paper is accepted, uh, and, uh, and then it is for everybody, of course, uh, when it is in such a journal. Okay, thank you. I understand that because I am also doing my PhD here in uh -huh, computer science, so <laughs> that process is quite science? complicated, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Yeah, and, so, and sometimes uh, uh, you cannot already uh, make results public because then you cannot uh, publish, publish those yeah. results yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, know, I, I meant after that publication, you can make the, the Excel tables, the databases public for, um, yes. for example, students and pupils to do classroom projects with this kind of data and then yes. learn how to manage. Yeah, we, we are in favor of that. And at, for now, uh, we have three students in our team uh, of, a, of a local university and they will continue in May, June and July our studies in Ireland. And for the first time we will now combine this GPS DSM tracking with DNA fingerprinting research from the excrements, as we call sprains from otters, and we also use trap cams, so three uh, methods at the same time. Yeah. And that's also really interesting uh, because in the last research in Ireland, still some questions remained open 
and for conservation it would be really nice if this could be answered the, the next question is very related with what we were saying is the database of the data provided by this system accessible to any scientist in the world well i think just you already told about that right yeah yes the database is uh, is protected um uh, because uh, uh, we do not want that everybody goes in there because there are also people who can uh, have bad intentions uh, there are there are poachers out there there are people yeah, yeah. who do not like wildlife and this could be an easy way no or they they want to hunt yeah, yeah they, they want to hunt yes yeah, exactly. they they know where the animal is yes. they go can go and kill him it yes that's why the, I showed... the skin, the fur is very appreciated. Yes, exactly. This okay. is why I showed... also, but you already also told when talking in the presentation about VHF systems that there was there were mobile applications, right? Yes. To track the systems. Yes. Yes. There, to track there the is... Yes. Um, for you mean for the triangulation, right? Yeah, yeah, but yes, uh, there were applications, uh, mobile applications. So, are they private or only in your smartphones? Ah, I, I see what you mean. Yes, yes. Well, um, with the VHF transmitters, you need to know uh, the frequency of the, ah, okay. the transmitters which are in or on the animal. Okay. okay. Without these, without these, uh, yeah, it's really hard to get the 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 positions of those animals or you must have a very good uh, scanner uh, uh, vhf scanner which scans the whole range of frequencies so that's that's difficult and those those apps as they are called nowadays those applications for android phone or iphone they are they are mainly there for the help in triangulating uh, mm -hmm. so you're in the field you hear the signal you point your antenna I, I try to do a little bit like that in the right direction. For instance, is this direction. Then with the app in your other hand, you take the same position and it draws a line on the screen of your app. And that's the first position. Then you go to another one and you draw another line. And where the lines cross, there about is your animal. Yeah, okay, good. So I have no more questions and it seems that there is no more questions. Thank you very much, Adi. It was very interesting. As I said, we thank will you. send the recording, the presentation and the video that we saw. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution to this Meet the Scientist series. And see you. And have a good yes, life. It was wonderful to do. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, bye for bye. coming also. Bye.